everybody, it's Jamie from No Getting Off This Train, and I am starting a new four weeks to fill your freezer challenge, and this week's theme is breakfast. I am so excited to be bringing this series and this challenge to you all today. We all know that the holiday season gets super busy, and at the time of this recording, we are just now almost entering into November, which, you know, November and Thanksgiving, it runs into Christmas, and it's all just one jumbled mess. And a lot of times, we are so busy, we don't have time to even think about what we're eating, let alone like buying presents for everybody and doing all the holiday stuff. So that's why around this time of year, I like to try and fill my freezer with all sorts of different freezer meals just to kind of help me out during the evening when I'm either too tired to cook or even just too tired to plan anything in general. So I've got four videos coming out here in the next four weeks. Today is number one. Each video is going to have five different recipes for you that you can try yourself throughout the next week or the next four weeks. I'm challenging you guys to join me, whether it is using the same recipes that I'm using or finding breakfast or other recipes that work for you guys that you can put in your freezer to help you out during this busy season. So like I said, this week is breakfast. I am making five different breakfasts for you guys today just to give you some inspiration and because we are out of breakfast as well, so I gotta get started. You don't have to do all of these in one day. In fact, I am doing this over the span of two days. Thankfully, Allison is at school now four days a week, so I have some time here in the mornings. Just get some of these freezer meals ready with no interruptions. So in this week's video, you're going to see Greek yogurt banana bread. You will see French toast made with brioche bread. You will also see uh, bagel sandwiches made with ham, egg, and cheese. There are also Southwestern omelet cups and breakfast meal prep bowls. There are also links in the description for all the printable recipes. So if you guys want to follow along, click all those links and print the recipes and cook with me. So are you ready to get started? Let me show you what I'm working on today. I am making three of the five freezer meals today, starting with the Greek yogurt banana bread. Here are all the ingredients over here. There's the brioche loaf for the French toast, and here are the ingredients for those bagel sandwiches. So I estimate this will take me maybe an hour, up to an hour and a half to make these three freezer meals, so let's get to work. So because the banana bread takes so long to bake, I am starting with that first. It bakes for about 55 to 60 minutes, so while that is baking, that will give us plenty of time to do the French toast and make the bagel sandwiches. And I know that as soon as I put this in the oven, I'm going to need to make the eggs for the bagel sandwiches as well. And luckily, these both bake at the same temperature. I totally did that on purpose. And this banana bread is actually the only recipe that I'm going to be doubling. Um, just because I always keep all the ingredients for banana bread or most baked goods already. So I really didn't have to buy anything extra. The thing that I like most about this banana bread recipe is that it does not use a whole lot of sugar. Have you seen those recipes for banana bread where it calls for like a whole cup of sugar or even like upwards of two cups of sugar for one loaf of banana bread like that to me is just insane so i prefer to use recipes that use like honey in smaller amounts either honey or maple syrup now it's it's all sugar it all converts the same way but i feel like honey and maple syrup are sweeter than sugar and they have maybe a tiny bit more nutrients than just plain white sugar, so I prefer to use those when I can. Another thing about this recipe is that you can use applesauce or you can use oil. I prefer to use applesauce. I mean, it does lower the fat and calorie content quite a bit, but for me, I like to put like peanut butter or cream cheese on top of my bread. So I like to use applesauce to make it a lower fat content in here. So that way I can put like more fat on top of it. I think it just tastes better that way. 
can you all leave me a comment and tell me what is your favorite type of sweet bread to make? I absolutely love banana bread. Um, I also love pumpkin bread, basically anything pumpkin really, but especially in the fall, I love to just kind of make the pumpkin bread and put chocolate chips in it and it's just delicious. So with this banana bread recipe, like I have it under the breakfast section, but you could also eat it for snacks. Like I made this recipe a couple of weeks ago and John and I just ate it for evening snacks. Um, we put peanut butter on top. We also put on pumpkin cream cheese, which by the way is delicious, especially the Aldi brand, which is so much cheaper than like the Philadelphia brand. Now with the flour, this recipe, I'm just using white whole wheat flour. It is basically whole wheat flour, but it has a lighter consistency to it. So it is not, it doesn't have like the, I don't know, it's not as dense as regular whole wheat flour. But mine is just regular Kroger brand. I know that King Arthur makes its own version as well. You could use white whole wheat flour. You could just use regular all purpose. You could also use a combination of whole wheat and all purpose. Just whichever you have at home. All right, I've got two eight and a half by four and a half loaf pans. And since I have enough to make two loaves here, I wanna make sure they're nice and even. So I'm just taking a cup at a time and pouring the mix in. I am obsessed with making sure that things are even just to make sure we get the right serving size. So do this however you want, but I feel like this is much easier and maybe a little bit more accurate. Alright, here we are sticking these in the oven and then we will set the timer for 55 minutes and then go from there. Sometimes it only takes 50, we'll have to see. While that's going, let's get some eggs in this muffin tin to bake for the bagel sandwiches. So these are the giant muffin tins, and I found that these actually work a whole lot better than a standard size muffin tin because they're a lot wider on the bottom, and that way you get like the nice flat eggs like you do with the McDonald's egg muffin. So really all you do is just crack the eggs into the bottom of each one, and then you can season them with salt and pepper or any other kind of seasoning if you like, and then I'll bake it, oh, I don't know, it just depends, usually between 13 and 15 minutes. At this point, you can leave the eggs as is, or you can scramble them just a tad bit, just depending on how you like your yolk. I mean, it's all gonna be cooked and hardened anyway, but I know that John prefers his to be somewhat scrambled, so I will just do that real quick before sticking them in the oven. All right, these are gonna go in, and we'll start with 13 minutes, and then we will go from there. I made a mistake. <laughs> that banana bread was supposed to have honey in it and I totally forgot to put it in there and it's kind of too late. So you're supposed to put honey in the banana bread. Um, so yeah, whenever it's done baking and whenever I'm ready to eat it, I'm just gonna sprinkle, drizzle some honey on top as well as my cream cheese or peanut butter 
That'll be fine. So yeah, that's what happens when you're trying to record a video and trying to keep track of everything. You tend to miss things, but it's gonna be okay. Anyway, while the bread is baking, we are gonna go ahead and make French toast. Now, I showed you guys this on my uh, grocery haul video, but this is from Aldi. This is sliced brioche loaf with chocolate chips. Now, is this a healthy recipe? No, it is not gonna be very healthy, but you know, you gotta have some treats every so often in here. Um, if you put some sliced bananas on it or something, or just have a side of fruit, it's gonna all balance out in the end. So my standard recipe for French toast is um, one egg and one third cup of milk for every three slices of bread. So I've got, well, there were 14 in here, but John and Allison wanted to try some. So we have 12 in here. So I'm gonna put in four, three, three, four, four eggs, <laughs> four eggs, and then a cup and a third of milk. And we'll go from there. It is still a little early. Allison just got on the bus about an hour ago, so I guess I am not quite awake yet. All right, so we'll try that. These slices of bread are pretty big, so it's possible I might need to add more, but we will see. I also like to add cinnamon and vanilla to it just to give it a little bit of extra flavor. So that was about a teaspoon of cinnamon and a teaspoon of vanilla. So it's just a standard French toast recipe. I've got my griddle here already preheated. So I've got my tongs as well. So I'll just take a slice of this and cover it and then we'll cook it. I can probably fit six slices on here, maybe even eight, we'll have to see. But as you can see, I'm doing these recipes in a specific order. I've got all the stuff that needs to bake in the oven first, because that bread, like I said, takes about 55 minutes to bake. So while that is baking, we can work on this French toast. And this French toast, you know, it takes maybe one or two minutes per side to cook. So in between those, we can start working on the bagel sandwiches. So I've got those right now. Let's see if we can start working on those bagel sandwiches. All right, so as you can see, I've got regular bagels here. These are just regular Aldi plain bagels. I've got six of them. So I'm going to make six sandwiches and I've got some smoked uncured ham from Aldi as well as a mixture of cheddar and Swiss sliced cheese. I just have a little bit of both laying around. So we're getting a good mixture. Now the eggs are not quite done. I've got um, two minutes on them it says. So I'm going to at least get a couple of them ready right now just to show you how it works. And then once the eggs are done and once they cool off a bit, we'll be able to finish up the sandwiches. So I start just with a slice of cheese on the bottom and I'm gonna put the ham on top of the cheese. Because the ham is a little bit wet, I don't want the bagel to get soggy. I usually don't have a problem with it but I just like to put it on top of the cheese anyway. So it says a serving size is five slices, but it serves five. So I'm gonna try for four slices per sandwich, and I, that should get us to the six servings. Okay, there's that. The eggs will be ready soon. So let's check on the French toast. Oh, that is beautiful. Sometimes you kind of have to watch it, um, especially since I'm recording. It takes me a little bit longer to get back over here. Just gotta make sure that this French toast does not burn. So 
So as you can tell from like the way I'm talking about serving sizes and stuff, we do keep track of how much we're eating just, you know, to get a good idea of whether we're eating enough and things like that. So I'm going to be putting all the nutrition info at the very end for you guys once all of this is finished. All right, the eggs are done. So let me show you just these right here. They poke them a little bit. They're nice and firm. Oh, it's a little hot. So I'll just set that right there for a minute or two. Once that cools off a little bit, I will take them out and let them cool off a little bit more before putting them on the sandwiches. All you do with the eggs is just take a knife and go around just like that. So you can very carefully scoop it out. Um, you can put these on a cooling rack if you want to. I just kind of set them just like that and that tends to work okay. But do you see like how skinny these, oh, how skinny these are, I almost lost it. Um, they will fit, I mean, they're not quite big enough to fit the entire bagel sandwich, but these are totally big enough for like an English muffin. Um, I'll show you here in a minute with the bagels, but you could also easily do English muffin sandwiches instead of bagels, or you could use like croissants or whatever. You can even change the meat up. Okay, there we go. I think the French toast is done. Oh yeah, that is beautiful. So we will set these aside and then we will get the other ones ready. I tend to have a hard time with French toast for some reason. Like I never get it all the way cooked. So this is actually looking really good for me. Okay, there's the last of the French toast. Um, now, like I said, we took out two pieces. So this is what's left over after the um, all 12. You might be able to use all 14 pieces and get that much. Um, if not, you may need to add another egg and just a little bit more milk, but otherwise that seems to be perfect. Let's let this cook. I'm gonna let the eggs cool off a little bit and then we'll get to the sandwiches. Okay, we're in the final stretch here. All I have to do is assemble the sandwiches, kind of finish up the French toast. We have 23 minutes on the banana bread, so let's get to it. All right, French toast is done. Bagel sandwiches are done. We have 18 minutes left on the banana bread. So I'm gonna stick these bagels in the freezer real quick and let these guys finish off cooling. All right, these guys are simple enough to freeze. After you wrap them in the plastic wrap, you just put all of them into a gallon sized freezer bag and just stick them right in the freezer. And these will, basically all of the freezer meals that I make stay fresh for up to three months in the freezer. They are still safe to eat after that, but you just risk the freezer burn. So I can fit four in here actually, 
Um, I'm gonna take the other two and put them in the fridge because we are gonna eat these guys for breakfast. Yeah, these guys look really good. Alrighty, not too bad for, for getting the honey in these suckers. So I put these in for 55 minutes and they ended up cooking for about 48. So just check them once they get to about the 45 minute, maybe 50 minute mark and see if they're done at that point. All right, here is all of today's work. This took, oh, about an hour and 15 minutes maybe, which really wasn't all that bad. So this is a doubled recipe of Greek yogurt banana bread. I've got a batch of French toast with the chocolate chip brioche bread. And well, here's four of the bagel sandwiches. The other two are in the fridge. But I managed to do all of that in about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, I already told you I'm gonna put these in the freezer as is. I will show you after these cool off how to freeze the other ones. I'm gonna wait about 10 minutes before putting this on a cooling rack. Always put your bread on a cooling rack, by the way, because the last time I made these, I accidentally let them sit in here for an hour and the bottoms got soggy, which was pretty gross, but I'll be back to show you how I freeze them. So freezing French toast and pancakes for that matter is super easy. I've got a cookie sheet here that's just got like a cooling rack on it. If you wanted to use parchment paper, you could do that as well. But I put mine on a single layer. That way they won't freeze together and get stuck together. This is called flash freezing when you put them all separately like this. So line them all up as many as you can. You probably won't get all 12 on there. So what I like to do, I kind of have a little hack here. I have another cooling rack that actually will sit right on top. Just gotta make sure that it's not on the other one. There we go. And now we have a double decker cooling rack. So this will actually fit quite nicely in my deep freezer. I can probably stick a couple more up here. There. But yeah, this actually right here will go straight into the freezer like this. And then once they're completely frozen, we'll put them in a gallon sized freezer bag. It's been a couple hours, so this loaf is completely cool. So I'm going to slice this into eight pieces. The thing I love about this particular loaf of bread is that these are huge slices and a lot of it is because I used um, applesauce instead of oil so that really cuts back on the calories. Um, <laughs> I also didn't use any sweetener in this so you know that also counts down on the calories but like I said I'm going to drizzle some honey on top when I eat it so but it'll have a little bit of sweetness from the bananas so it's not like it's gonna be just a hunk of bread you know what I mean it'll still be kind of sweet just definitely not as sweet as you would expect or w w what you're used to with other banana breads who else hates it when you don't slice your bread evenly I hate having like a really good sized piece and then like a nitty bitty little piece so I really do my best to make sure they're even. But luckily eight slices is not too hard to get even. So I'm gonna put these on a cookie sheet. The French toast should be finishing up freezing very soon. So when that's done, I will stick these in the freezer. Um, as you can see, I've got parchment paper on this one because this one is not is too big to have that cooling rack on it so parchment paper works just as well and I can definitely tell that there's no honey in it I don't know if you can see it's just a very lighter color usually with the honey it is just a little bit darker so let me see if I can fit any more slices on here all right, so I can't fit the entire loaf on here. I still have four slices, but I'll just stick these in the fridge and I'll eat these for breakfast, just like the other bagel sandwiches. But I will check on the French toast in a few minutes and then put this in the freezer. 
All right, day one is complete. I managed to get everything in the freezer. They are getting ready to be put into the freezer bags and just ready for whenever we're ready to eat them for breakfast in the next coming weeks. So tomorrow I'm going to be starting the other two recipes, which hopefully should not take as long. There's only two of them, so I should be able to get them out in less than an hour or so. Let's go to the next day. Here we are at day two. Allison just got on the bus and I am getting ready to make the other two freezer meals. And the other two I'm making this morning are Southwestern omelet cups and sweet potato breakfast bowls. So should be really easy. Should not take me quite as long as last time. So let me show you the ingredients and let's get started. This is all I'm using this morning to make my two freezer meals. So as you can see, some of it is already chopped, some of it still needs chopping, so that might take the majority of my time. But let's get to chopping the sweet potatoes first. All right, I gotta go into a voiceover now because there is somebody else in the house with me while I was recording this. But I chopped up, oh gosh, it's probably like three pounds of sweet potatoes. I wanted to get six cups worth and it looks like I just made it. So those are going into a large skillet. I put in about a tablespoon or two of olive oil, and then I sauteed the sweet potatoes for about 10 minutes. I also added some uh, spices like salt and I think some chili powder as well. Now I'm getting ready to make the egg cups. I, all I had to do was chop up this onion and then I could just add a lot of the other ingredients to it. I like these egg cups because they are super full of protein and vegetables and they're super good grab and go breakfast. I am having so much trouble with these videos. Like I can't go one video without something going wrong. But it was enough onion for this, so I was good. Next, I broke off about a cup or two of baby spinach and just put that into the bowl as well as some shredded cheese. Then I cracked eight eggs into the bowl and added a few more spices and then just mixed it all together. I originally thought these were going to be Southwest egg cups, but there's really nothing Southwestern about them, I realized, so I'm really just calling them veggie filled omelet cups, which I think is pretty accurate. Um, and then I forgot to put in the bell peppers, so I just threw in about a cup or so and finished mixing. Then I took a greased muffin tin and a fourth cup measuring cup and just try to scoop it as evenly as possible. I did have to go back in after I was done and like take out a little bit here and there and add it to other little muffin cups, but it turned out pretty good. I baked them for about 15 minutes or so. While those were baking, I could work on the sweet potato bowls. After about 10 minutes, I added a half cup of water to the sweet potatoes and then put the lid on and let that cook for about an extra 10 minutes or so. I could have roasted them, but I kind of felt like this was easier. Then after they were done, I put them a cup at a time into six different bowls. It's a lot of sweet potatoes, but they are so good for you. They are full of vitamin A, they are full of fiber, healthy carbs. So this is making up the majority of the carbs in this breakfast. I 
added some more olive oil to the pan and then I added the mushrooms and then some more bell peppers. I cooked it for maybe five minutes or so, just enough to get the, the vegetables a little bit soft. While those were cooking, I also got the eggs ready. I cracked in, I believe it was six eggs. Then I just added in some milk and a few more spices and mixed that together. My plan was to scramble those in along with the vegetables. I really liked day two better than day one because I felt like I wasn't doing quite as much work. So the, the veggie omelet cups were done at this point. I kind of took a fork to them to make sure they were done in the middle and they were, they were perfect. So then after a couple minutes, I added the scrambled egg mixture to the pan and spent about five minutes or so just scrambling it all up. I found that the eggs kind of turned a weird color, probably due to the mushrooms, but it's, it made it look weird, but it still tasted really good. So I added about a cup of the mixture into each bowl. I didn't put any cheese on it, but you certainly could. Um, shredded cheddar would be awesome with it. I know that shredded mozzarella would be good too. I would probably wait until they cooled off a little bit before adding the cheese to it though. and they are completely done. I'm just waiting for them to cool and then I will put lids on them later and stick them in the freezer. Here are the egg cups. I set them all on a cooling rack just to finish cooling when it comes time to freeze them. Um, I actually put them just like this on a cookie sheet with that cooling rack underneath them. I flash froze them and stuck them in a gallon sized freezer bag. All of these will stay fresh in the freezer for up to three months or so. I keep saying they're still safe to eat after that. You just risk a little bit of freezer burn. So these are going straight in the freezer and make sure you label the bags as well because I still make that mistake after a while. The containers are kind of harder to label. You could use a marker if you wanted to, or you could tape a piece of paper, or if you have stickers, you could use that too. But I don't have very many of these containers in the freezer, so I pretty much remember what they are, thankfully. But I'm gonna show you some pictures here of all of the creations and their nutrition info.
That is it for this week. Leave me a comment and let me know which of these breakfasts are you excited to try. I am most excited about the French toast because I love anything with chocolate chips. Chocolate is my jam, so I think I may have to make some more of that soon. And like I said, all the printable recipes for these are in the blog post in the description, so make sure you check out all those links so you can print them out and try them for yourselves. All the nutrition info is located on there as well. And since this is four weeks to fill your freezer, I've got another set of freezer meals coming to you next week. Next week's theme is lunch. So make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can be notified when that video comes out. Just ring that bell so it'll come up in your notifications. And also just subscribe so you can be notified whenever my other grocery hauls come out or my other recipes or my other meal planning tips. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you later.